Hi guys, Niklas Bauer here and welcome back to Thai TV. A uh, long time no see actually, so uh, it's going to be really fun to uh, shoot some big pike flies now for you guys. Today we're going to start with the uh, really big, foot-long, articulated, uh, whitefish, grayling, eyed, roach pattern, whatever you want. The first time I really got in contact with this type of pattern was uh, when I fished last summer with my good friend Paolo Paccarini from Italy, who's the uh, founder of all these cool tails, you know, dragon tails, wiggle tails, and also these saddle tails. And um, they're really cool because it makes the flies, if you tie them in a little bit more narrow, high profile, these slick uh, saddle tails make that fly really turn side to side. and. Um, it makes them quite durable, light to cast, and a completely different movement in the water than if you're using a, a saddle hackle. So um, this is what we're going to tie. It's a foot long whitefish pattern, uh, two hooks, and uh, a lot of other stuff. So uh, it's going to be a quite cool pattern for you to follow. Um, you have seen me tie a lot of patterns now, a lot of flies on Thai TV, and also on our own YouTube channel at uh, Fly Dressing. So we are going to narrow it down a little bit. We're not going to be that thorough when it comes to all these how to choose the bucktail and stuff like that, because you have seen that so many times already. So I have prepped basically the whole fly here for you guys. Um, this is a really good way if you want to tie consistent flies, very similar and uh, not too much time-consuming, so this is a really good way. Um, but also to reduce the time and the film here so we don't have to bore you to death to, to choose all the things. But a few things um, just before we start. Uh, bucktail, uh, as normal, when we're tying the tail of the fly, uh, when we're not hollow tying, we're choosing the bucktail from the tip where it has less air. And the further down, when we're going to hollow tie and create a lot of volume, I've chosen bucktail from the lower part of it. So even if it seems like it's the same bucktail in this prep station, it's actually um, these two bunches here are a different bucktail just to be able to create more volume or it's chosen from a different part of the, of the bucktail. So those are the only things. Otherwise, uh, I mixed some flashable, so it's a few different colors. You can see it in the description below on YouTube, the whole material list. So, but let's start. Um, I'm tying on the Erex Trout Predator. This is called the TP610, which I think is a very, very nice hook, what I'm tying basically all my pipe flies on nowadays. It has a perfect thickness, in my opinion, uh, and it has a very wide gape, which I think is really, really good for this. So we're going to tie it. The back hook is going to be on a 4.0, and the front hook is going to be on a 6.0. If you want the flies to be slightly smaller, you just reduce this, the back hook to a 2.0 and the front hook to a 4.0. And you have a smaller pattern, and you can also choose to use the shorter saddle feathers, uh, saddle hackles here. Uh, instead of going for the really long ones, you just reduce it a little bit, and you can have a smaller fly, which is going to be close to 20 centimeters. But this is a fly that I want to fish in like rivers, backwaters, or open water, where we have big pikes searching for big prey, and they're really feeding on these 500 grams uh, grayling or whitefish or something, and they're really keen and, and targeting that. So really cool pattern. Let's, let's go. Stop talking now. So, as normal, let's glue the thread to the hook. Nothing has changed there. Techstream 100 denier, white. Really, really good thread for this. Super strong, durable, and uh, yeah, really, really good actually. Now there's 100 meters on the spools too, so now we don't really run out of them either. So, prep station here. So, we're going to start with some bucktail in the, in the tail here. I want to have fairly long bucktail. So this is taken from the top of the bucktail. I like to taper the tips a little bit so that it's, if the bucktail is very straight, so you have a nice taper to it. So we're going to take that, just like normal, push it all through. Try to see that you have the material all around the hook, make a few turns, and then kind of tighten it. Then we're going to work towards the hook eye with the thread, so we have a nice and strong thread base. Put a clamp there. We're going to cut all the excess material off here, so all the stuff we don't need, just to have a nice and, and tidy thread base here. After that, we take uh, the first bunch of Magnum Flashable. So this is um, Magnum, uh, silver, hollow silver, and Mirage, and it's divided into two and cut into half. 
and then I've tapered the end a little bit so we have a nice taper. So this is something we're going to spread around. I like to use only magnum flash in this because it makes that fly kind of like it never tangles and it gets that little bit wider profile of flash in, inside of the fly which I really like. So I don't run any thinner flash in these flies at all, only the wider stuff. So we're going to go with the thread here, back to the starting point. Kind of try to fold these all around here. Try to get as many of these. Uh, let's see if we can work this back here. There you go. So we try to spread them quite evenly around. Not too many strands on the belly, mostly on the sides and on the top of this. And as always, we fold the flash above over to become very strong and durable. So we work with the thread towards the hook eye again. We drop a super glue to secure that. We go back again. And then we're going to take these saddle tails here. These are, um, this is going to be the this is silver and these are XXL, so they are the longest one. And then we're going to put two um, which are size XL in the front. So, but these are going to be really the tail and that's going to be really that rudder to the whole flyer. So it really makes it turn really nice. So we're going to tie these forward and flip them over. And this is uh, for durability. So we're going to take the thread base and put it here like two millimeters in. I like to do this, this in wet glue because it makes it just even stronger. So make a few thread wraps there. If we flip this over, push it down with your finger and we just make a few thread wraps on top of that. We flip it over and we do the same on the other side here. Just a few gentle thread wraps some pressure on the thread, flip it over, make sure it's straight and secure that with a few thread wraps. And then we are basically done with that. Some super glue again, just to make sure that this is strong. They're actually extremely durable. Uh, all of you guys who have been fishing um, with the um, with dragon tails and, and tails like this, know how strong they really are, this, this type of material. I forgot a little bit, so I need to add a little bit more bucktail here. But I forgot to put in my prep station. So we're going to have a small piece in front of this. So we're going to taper those ends again. So now I'm going to position my thread base in front of all these thread wraps here. Uh, because this is something I'm just going to hide now and I want to have a nicer transit um, into the, the rest of the back fly here. But also make this bucktail here also helps these, these saddle tails to, to not to tangle. So that's why I want to have bucktail around the whole hook shank here. So I'm going to go like this. We don't want to have the full length because we want to kind of like stay half of the, the previous one. So we're going to push that around like that. Go around with the thread, a few loose wraps, and then tighten it up. Put some pressure to the thread. Make sure we have a nice and even spread all around here, which we succeeded in. Take one of those hair clamps. And here I like to kind of like get an angle to the material I'm cutting away. Because if you just lift, flip it up, make a straight cut, you're going to have that really bump there. So if you lift it up like this, you put the scissor along the hook like that, you're going to basically taper that cut. And it's going to be much nicer transit into the next material. So it's a little bit kind of a lifting there, but just lie it flat along the hook. And when you go with the thread, you're going to see that you're going to have a nice taper out and the next material is going to lie much more straight and flat onto the, onto the hook. So we just put some super glue again and then we're going to use some 
polymer chenille. This is the size medium. Uh, I really like this because it's not building too much volume. There's so many different type of uh, materials on here uh, that are like glitter chenilles or, or polymer chenilles or whatever. But I really prefer these, the ones that has all the material on one side, because otherwise they're real, really building too much volume in, in certain flies. Of course, in some flies it's really good, but when you want to tie these back parts and a little bit slimmer fly, the ones who has it on only one side is what I prefer. So we're going to tie this in here. Then we're going to go with the thread all the way forward, back again. Then we're going to position the thread here around, around half a centimeter. I like to put a little bit of glue here and also a drop of glue over that because when you have been catching a lot of pike on a fly like this, like this one who has been probably having like 30, 40 nice fish on it, and this one was actually still, but sometimes uh, this is one of those materials that are going to break. And then it's good that you have tightened the thread uh, with a drop of glue here in the front, because the, otherwise you're not going to lose the rest of the fly. It's only this that's going to come off. So we make some quite uh, nice wraps with this. Just going to kind of focus on doing it. Uh, in front of each other here. This is really the part where you fast forward as normal. Just gonna continue working the whole hook stem here, putting the layers in front of each other the whole time. If you wanna have a, an even lighter fly, you can actually skip this part. So there we go. We're just gonna tie that material off. F make a few thread wraps to secure that, and the drop of super glue. Just to make sure it's strong again. So the tail is there, uh, the body is here now. So now we're going to continue with the with the uh, front part here. So we're going to do some bucktail again. This one we are going to tie in and we're going to cover this with some craft for after this. So now again. These parts shouldn't be longer than the previous one, so because then we are kind of in a situation where we are having tapers, we're kind of losing the taper on the fly. So these last ones were ending here, so I want to keep it a little bit shorter than that. So I'm going to kind of push that all around here. Okay, and now I'm going to work with the thread here. See where we want to be. There we want to be. Try to get the material all around again. Put some thread pressure. Here, if you want to have really a lot of volume, you can hollow tie here, but I want this back part to be a little bit slick. So I prefer not to do that, but it's a little bit up to your choice. If you have bucktail that hasn't, it's not really the best quality, um, then you can hollow tie it. You get a little bit more volume to the fly. Once again, try to taper all the material that we cut off so we get a nice ending of the fly here. Just wrap over those ends. So we basically have that. So now we're going to put some flashable here. We have the same mixture as we had in the tail. Uh, we don't need this many strands here, so we're going to use around 10 strands of magnum here, different colors. We can make sure that these are, sometimes if there are a few that are a little bit too long, we don't th want these to interfere too much with the tail in the back here. So I'll rather have them slightly shorter than too long. And as always, really taper the ends, so you have that fly looking really natural and, and good swimming. So once again, try to get them all around the fly, tying in at 60% in the back, and then 40% here that we're gonna flip over. So we're basically going to wrap those around there. Make 
sure we have. And then we're going to flip these over here. So we have them nice and spread all around, hopefully. So basically the only thing we are going to kind of like and this is, is with a little bit of craft for now. And that's just to get a little bit better transit into the next one and get a little bit more color into it or a little bit more less see-through than the tail because it's actually kind of um, see-through in the back but I want to have more color of the white here. So we're going to run this new craft fur that has some, um, some uh, it's pre-glittered already which is really cool. So we're going to run that in white and has some nice um, silver glitter inside. I have already taken all those short fibers away. I'm just going to run through it again just to make sure that there's no fibers. And then we're going to hollow tie this. So we're going to basically tie it forward uh, and flip it forward, flip it back. So just create a nice kind of a carpet. Try to get the thread all around here. Make sure that we have it all around, which we don't. Just flip it with your hand a little bit so we get material basically all around like this. Just give a little bit help. Make a few tight thread wraps. And then instead of just cutting all this material away here, I'm just kind of tapering it a little bit so it becomes a nice uh, volume lifter to the head there. And then we're going to put some super glue on the thread here and then we're going to basically end the fly here uh, by making one loop here to secure the thread. So you want to kind of push the thread towards the hook eye so we get that nice uh, and straight head. So we're going to basically push this, we're going to flip this over here now, take your kind of favorite um, tool to push, if it's a straw or whatever it is, just to flip all the fibers um, towards the end of the fly here. And then we just can set some water just to make those come down. And then we're going to use just some UV resin. This is the thin man here around the edge of this craft right here just to have this holding down instead of putting a lot of thread wraps here. This is simple and nice way to do it. So we can do it like that. Take your uh, hair clamp, push it into the direction you want, and then we just cure it. So the uh, back hook is done, and of course if you just want to smack two eyes on this, you have a really cool fly looking like that. But this is going to be the back part, so we are going to put these together with a wire, some beads, and, and then we're going to continue with the front hook. So we're running the 6-0 now, because it's going to be a big, big fly. And what I like with these, that they're fairly light wire still, they're not too light, so you don't open them on a big fish or you don't open them really uh, if you get snagged on the bottom. But um, it's a good size wire and I really enjoy this wide gape because it makes a very, very good hookup rate. So we're going to go like that. I'm going to put some, um, normal, some glue here. the uh, thread onto the hook here. So this is uh, a piece of wire here. This is the uh, Partridge 40 pound, 49 strand uh, plastic coated wire, which I think is perfect for this. It's very, very durable and uh, it's the, it has the right thickness. So we're going to position uh, the wire on the uh, opposite side towards me. Going to have it flat against the hook and try to kind of like go with not so tight thread wraps and then we're basically going to cross those thread wraps on the way back. And that gives a very good thread pressure and the wire is going to be 
really, really strong onto that. Then we're going to push, push some beads on it. These are the six millimeter articulated beads here. So we have a silver one, a super fluorescent orange one, and another silver one. And depending on how many beads you have here, you're also calling the distance between the two hooks. So if you want to have them to be tighter, you can just reduce one, or if you want to have even a longer uh, uh, part between the hooks, you can just add one. But I very seldom actually go over three beads because I think it's, we don't, it's usually that's the longest dis distance I want to have between the hooks. So let me just push these, this wire through here, and then I want to make sure that this is, of course, uh, straight here. So I'm just going to put this on the side here. Make sure that we have the wire not twisted here, so it's on the side. And then we want to have this as straight as possible. So the hook is keeling. So we can always, I just put a few, as you can see, a few thread wraps here. So one of the wires on, on the opposite side, and this is going to be on the same side as me. I kind of tie it in there, and then you can kind of twist this wire that you are that are the closest to you. If this loop here is a little bit off, you just twist it in the opposite direction, so you can get it straight. So it really makes it straight uh, trace to this to the back hook. So I'm going to go a little bit back with the thread here, slightly down in the slope. Now you can see I have almost the same size loop here as one of these beads. And the back, the, the, the first bead here is resting against the hook bend, which I think this is a, basically the perfect distance and the perfect setup for this. So we're going to continue with wrapping the, the wire towards the hook right here. Cut this off here. Going all the way forward, and then kind of cross wrap, wrapping these on the way back. I'm just going to go another way. Another one towards. And if you've done if you have done this a few times, it's going to be super strong. And now we're back in the same position again here. And of course some super glue. And then these two things are never going to come apart. I've seen a few guys trying to do this with titanium wire and that's something I can really recommend you not to do because it's really hard to get it to be uh, situated on the hook because it's so slick and also if you get a kink on it you can really really easily break it. This position here with the titanium wire is usually a very bad thing. So go with a, with a coated wire that really grips and then you're set to go. So uh, we have that. Uh, they are nice and fixed together. So now we're going to build up the front. So we're going to start with some polar reflector flash or some longer chenille flash um, from hairline or text stream or something like that but it should be a, a long hair chenille which has the most material on one side so it doesn't build too much. We're gonna kind of just tie it in in the back here and then we're gonna wrap this approximately one centimeter forward here. And when, when we're doing this we're just gonna fold material backwards the whole time here. Ooh. Something like that. We're going to tie that off. And just make a few turns here so we have a nice secure so this is a little bit to kind of hide all the, uh, where we have tied all the wire and stuff like that in, but it also gives a little bit lift to the next part, which is going to be a, a bucktail collar here. And now I'm switching to gray. <coughs> this is from the top part of the, of the bucktail. So we're going to just trim that a little bit. Once again, we're going to kind of push this. We don't want to have them too long, so we don't want to use the full length. I want to have a little bit, uh, maybe, maybe touching them like half and half here. So they're touching the same, same tips as the craft fur in the, in the previous part of the fly here. So something like that. P 
push that all around, kind of spread them around with the thread and give a good pull here. Let's see, we just have material all around the hook here. That looks good. So just continue with some nice thread wraps here. Put a clamp here just to get those out of the way. And then we're gonna kind of repeat what we did in the, in the previous when we're cutting the material away. Just put that scissor straight against the hook here. Like lean it on there and you get that nice taper. Something like that. So we're going to tie those fibers down and then we're going to go back again. So we have this and we want to have that, we don't want to have too much material interfering with the back hook here. So we want that back hook to be able to swim really nice and freely. So, so that's the whole idea here. And then next thing is we're going to add um, a little bit more of the uh, mixture here of the Magnum Flashable blend here. So just going to do exactly what we have done on the previous bunches here. Try to spread them nice and uh, evenly around. Uh, slightly more on the top, even if I say evenly around, so slightly more on the top. But it's always nice to have a few strands on the lower part too. Uh, so we're going to mix that around there. Tie that down. Try to have them spread in. So I'm happy with that. Just to get a clamp there to so get everything out of the way. Put a drop of super glue. Then we're gonna add some more of the of the chenille here. Just gonna tie it in the same way with the tips facing towards the floor. And then we're gonna wrap this basically, uh, yeah a good centimeter forward because after that we're going to put another bunch of bucktail and um, we're going to have a naked hook and then we're going to go with the last bunch of bucktail where we're going to put some nayat, craft fur and so on. So we actually have quite a lot of space on the hook here so we don't have to overdo it so we get get a, 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 a we get in that kind of position where we end it with, with a very very tight fit here. So, so you have a lot of space to work with on the front hook and we don't want to have too much material because it's just going to make the fly um, heavier and harder to cast. So try to um, try to build with volume and not too much material, and that's usually the best way to go here. So like that, centimeter. And I'll tie this off here. A few wraps to secure that. I'm gonna come in with that. A second to last bunch of bucktail. Once again, if the tips are very even like they are here, I like to taper them a little bit. So we have a little bit better taper on the fly, something like that. And this we can use quite long, but not too long. So these are the tips from the previous one here. So I want to be, I don't want to be longer than that. So at least a centimeter shorter. Once again, we're going to push this around here, try to get those bucktail fibers all around the hook. Good pull again. So it's a little bit kind of copy paste here. Make sure that we have them all around the hook. And then some good pressure on that thread. Try to pull with a straight bobbin if you're putting a lot of pressure onto it. And also a good bobbin. And then we're gonna cut the material away here.
So, just gonna tie those fibers down. So as you can see, I'm not overdoing the bucktail amount here. I'm kind of trying to keep it not sparsely dressed, but at least so we're building volume, but not overdoing it. Uh, so we're not becoming, so the fly is not becoming too heavy. So now in the last bunch here, I used to have a tendency to put a little bit more silver into it, um, just to make it slightly darker compared to uh, the, the previous bunches where I have more of the Mirage flashable inside. So this is a little bit more silver inside. Now we're gonna do the same again here. Spread it around. And then as always, fold those other fibers back to get that durability and a nice taper to it. Make sure we have them. Some on the belly, but mostly on the back and on the sides. So, we're going to put some glue on there. And here, if you have a lot of space here, of course, if you want to have that fly very, very bulky, you can add some um, body material here, but I prefer to skip those. And I prefer to go down to the naked hook here, where we are going to kind of put the last bucktail bunch and quite a lot of other stuff. So I don't, we don't need to put more because it's not going to be visible in any case. It's just going to add weight and not that much bulkiness. So I think it's better to have it this way. So the last bunch of bucktail we're going to have here is from the, uh, from the lower part of the bucktail. So it consists of more air inside. Uh, which actually makes it even, uh, when, when you tie it, it, it spreads even more. And the same here, we're going to, where it flares even more. So we're going to pull those tips a little bit. Here you can hollow tie this, or you can tie it in, in, the, in the normal way. I'm going to tie, tie it in the normal way because I don't want too much volume here. So try to get the fibers all around the hook. Once again. And you can see when I'm tightening this, it really flares a lot. So we have that nice spread all around the hook here. Just work with the thread forward here a little bit. Now we can cut this. Off here. So that's basically going to be the color for all the other stuff we're going to have in there. So I'm just going to make it nice thread wrap there. So nice situation for the thread here. As you can see, it's, we have a very lightly dressed fly still, a lot of volume. So now we're going to add some flashable. We're going to put those two shorter saddle hackles or saddle feathers. And also we're going to make a nice mixture of uh, Nyat. So this is uh, Gandalf Grey. Uh, probably I'm, I'm going to look like this soon. And then we have a Shad Grey, which is a lighter grey color. And if you just go with one of these colors, I think it's a little bit too light. I want to have a little bit more natural. So I'm going to blend these together just to get a perfect mix. And I'm also going to blend two of the craft first together just to get that really nice mixture. So I'm going to take a bunch of each here. And uh, it's just uh, it's hard to say exactly how much, but uh, the thickness of a, of a small finger or something like that. So we have a your pinky, something like that. And we do the same with the Gandalf Grey here. So this is the natural color of the material here. Which is, which is really cool because it fades into a darker and that's more natural to, uh, to uh, the head of a fish. So I don't know if you can see it, but I'm going to put it onto my lap like this, onto my knee and put them together. And then I'm going to take my brush 
I'm gonna work it so I get all those short, medium, fluffy stuff in. Kind of gonna roll them together. And then I'm gonna kind of continue brushing them together like this. Flip it over and do the same again here. So it's easier to brush and, and comb this for two flies than one because it's it usually get a nicer mixture if you have a little bit more material. So you just continue going like this, flipping it back and forward a few times. And you have what I would say like a really, really cool mixture of those, those two colors together. So it's shadow gray and Gandalf gray here. So we're gonna put those aside and then we're gonna put some more flashable in here. You guys who know me and seen my fly time before know that I like flashable. So it's always good. And Pike seemed to like it too. So, so we're gonna go again. Last bunch of flashable here. Nice evenly spread. Pull it down a little bit. Tighten it, and as normal, flip it over, like that. So we have that. Now we're going to tie in these two cell tails here. This is copper, which I like as a nice access color to this. Uh, of course you can do, for example, I sometimes tie them with a really bright one like this. Uh, it's also a really good way to do it, but uh, I want to keep this a little bit more natural. And the silver and copper really blends in together. So, and these are the slightly shorter ones than in the tail. The tail is uh, XXL, this is XL. So these are perfect for the, for the front part of the fly. And even if you want to have a smaller fly, I would recommend you to put these in the tail and then leave uh, leave them out here, so just only use the two in the tails if you have the smaller fly because you get a really nice action to it. So, once again, drop a super glue here where we have the thread, and we are going to tie these in exactly the same way as we did in the previous one, facing forward and flipping them backwards. And I like to have an angle where they're standing just slightly, not all straight, just slightly upwards like that. Not a lot, but just a little bit. Kind of like that. Flip it over. Kind of makes more looking like shoulders on a salmon fly. L slightly more natural, I don't know why, but it just, just looks pretty cool. So we have those there. Drop a super glue again, just to make sure that everything is very strong here. And now we're going to tie in the uh, Nayat, which we have mixed. So I'm going to divide this into ba basically two bunches here. This one we're going to use as the full length. This one is going to be as the belly of the fly. So we're not going to use more than half of that. So I'm going to cut that off right away. and then. And this is, this is a really good technique when you're tying with Nayat, which is a, a awesome fly tie in the US called Gunnar Brammer. He's been showing this in his videos and actually I, he showed me that too. And I think it's a really, really good way to do it. Instead of trying to tie it in and cut it off like this, you just taper all the uh, back parts here, which you normally take off or cut off. And you just flip it and tie them in and use them as support. And it's so much easier to handle this material. So that's going to be the lower part of the fly. So as you can see, I taper those, keep them into the fly here, put the thread wraps. So these we're going to leave now and it just makes that perfect mixture. This we want, we're not going to use the whole length, but we are going to use, I would say that length. So we're going to cut them off a little bit. Just as I showed you on the previous one, we're going to taper those ends here. 
like that. You have a nice taper. You can actually just give them one comb so it's nice. And we're going to make like a thin carpet before we tie that in. Like that. So, and then we are going to try to find the center here. Oops. So we can flip this over. I'm just going to use our reverse tool here. There we go. Just needs a little bit of support. Like that. Then we just make a few thread wraps over that. So just comb that out. See, we have a nice transit from the previous material. And as you can see now, this is becoming slightly diffuse. So those two shoulders here are going to be, when we pull this fly and it really swims like a jerk bait like that, all this flare from this nice copper is going to be a very visual, visual thing here. So we have this white fly now, so it's transit into a more gray color. And then we have this a little bit more diffuse in the, in the front here. So I think it's a very natural look, which I like a lot here. So I'm just going to put the hair clamp on here. We're going to put some glue on the thread here. Because I want to put the next thread wraps in front of this bunch here. So I really want to make sure that this is situated and strong, like that. And here we are going to do a reversed head with craft fur. So, so I want to make sure that this is strong and no, no problems there at all. So we're going to use normal craft fur. So this is the hairline grey olive. And then this is the new stuff from uh, Nightmare Muscifies, which is a grey one with uh, silver inside. I think these two blended together becomes really cool. One is a little bit more matte in structure or in color, and this one is a little bit more shiny. So it becomes a really cool mixture. So as when you do this again, assisted with the uh, round tip, it's really good because when you kind of put the scissor into the carpet and lift this up, if you're using a scissor which has a straight tip, you, you get stuck here the whole time. So round tip. Lift it up, cut a bunch of this off, and like normal, push this together here and comb all the under fur out, which you can see is quite a lot. It's a great dubbing actually, but we're not going to use that this time. So we have those longer fibers still left there. We're going to do the same with the gray olive here. Take a little bit, same size of a bunch here. the fur out. Now we're going to try to blend this together here now. So just roll it together like that and then start working it with a comb or a brush. I'm going to flip it back and forward a few times. So we have this nice mixture here. So, so we have a little bit flashable inside here. And then this nice mixture that's going to be working really nice together with this mixture of, uh, of Nayat we have in the previous one here. So it's going to be just a darker, slightly nice fade into another one here. So, and we're going to use the same basically the same technique again here. 
when we tie this in. So we are going to taper these ends because we are going to leave them. So we're just going to lightly taper them. So we have a nice, kind of a nice carpet here. So it's looking like that. Actually, I'm not perfect, something like that. Because then you don't have to really care about cutting them off and making a nice, nice ending there. You can just basically tie it in, cut the thread off, and we're good to go. So let's see if I succeeded with that. I did not really. Uh, well, I did actually. So, so now you can see I have that spread all around the whole um, whole head. And I have these fibers, if you have any that are, oh, I think it's good. So we basically have, we basically have a nice mixture all around here. Just a few tight thread wraps. Put some glue on the thread here. And we're just going to finish this off. Like that. And we are going to kind of flip this backwards. So we have that nice reversed head of craft for here. Oh, and if you have a little bit wet super glue underneath, it actually helps this, these fibers to get stuck there. But we're also going to give them a little bit of help here. So we are going to hold those back with a, one of these hair clamps like that. And we're gonna use we're gonna use this Gulf Flexman for the whole head. So even if you have had like this one had a lot of fish, it's still a soft head that doesn't break, and that's a good thing in my opinion. So, and of course, this is how it looks when it's brand new, but you still have that flexible head. So we wanna start before we glue the eyes on, just to make a super thin kind of a layer here, just like we did in the rear hook. But now we're gonna use the flex flexible here, which makes those heads Extremely durable. So something like that. We're gonna push this over here. So we have a little bit what we want here. Something like that. Then we're gonna cure that. And now we basically have the the angle of the, the head I want here. So before we uh, put the eyes on here, I'm just gonna comb this together. Take a look at this. And as you can see now, we have those copper here as really as shoulders on the fly. And we have a slightly more sparsely dressed tail and those two silver saddle tails here, which is going to make the fly kick really. So depending on now, if you want to make the head a little bit rounder, it's not going to swim as rapidly to the side, or if you make it super narrow and super high, it's going to be really that side to side movement, but it's going to do that regardless, you know. So I'm going to try to go a little bit in between here. So about happy with that. I'm going to put it back in the vise. Try to have the angle straight now when you do this. So because when you're going to add the uh, UV resin, it's also a, it's always a good good way to have it. If it's leaning down, you're going to have the tendency to the the resin is going to go down the whole time. So it's good that you have it lined up straight, and it really really helps to have a vise which is rotatable, so you can flip it all around. We're going to use the new Predator eyes from Paolo Paccarini. These are stick-on eyes. And uh, what I like with these are they're a little bit softer, so you can actually kind of bend them around the fly if you prefer that. Uh, but I also like with these 
new resins that are available that you don't have to use epoxy anymore. And I don't use that many epoxy eyes anymore either because this is cheaper, uh, more versatile, and, and you kind of you create a whole solid head instead of just gluing two eyes and trying to add some UV resin in between. So I think this is really the way to go in my opinion. At least this is how I do it nowadays. So we put that eye on a, a dubbing needle, put some super glue in the back, and we're gonna position it in the in the angle we want here. We can, if you want, you can just fold it slightly. We're gonna copy paste on the other side here. I prefer to have a smaller needle like this when I'm doing this because it's slightly easier to handle. You can just have a, like a normal sewing needle. We're gonna do the same on the other side here. Try to get it where we want it. So, and now it's time for some UV resin. And um, if you really want to learn a lot about re how to use different viscosities of UV resin and how to kind of um, plow, play around with different heads, we have a, a really nice um, video about that, like a UV resin school for eyes. So if you just click on the link below here or on top here, or it will be available in the description below otherwise. Uh, but um, it's really cool if you want to kind of dig into the different viscosities and the different variations of, of um, possibilities you have with res UV resins nowadays. But now we're going to keep it simple, so we're going to use Flexman, and we're only going to use one, 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 one type. The first thing here is to make sure that these eyes are slightly like put together, and we are going to start covering this with a thin layer in between here. Uh, we can also fold along the side of the eye, just gentle here. The good thing with this is that you have all the time in the world basically, and especially the first layer, because it goes into the material a little bit, uh, instead of a kind of epoxy where you have to really rush it. Uh, so we're doing this, and then we're going to flip this, push this hair clamp forward. Uh, make sure we have the head we want. And then we're going to cure this. And one thing that's very important when you're using UV resins is that you have a strong lamp. And the good thing is to have one that are kind of made for the glue that you're, or the resin that you're using. Uh, but also it's very important that it's, it has fresh batteries or it's freshly charged because if you're getting low on that, uh, it takes longer time for the, cure, the, the UV resin to, clear, to cure, and it's not really a good situation. So that's the first coat. So uh, that's only to, to get the material where I want it, the eyes kind of in the good situation, and also situated where I want it. So the second one is going to be basically filling the gap here on the top one. So we're basically just filling that, curing that for a few seconds. We're going to do the same thing on the belly here. Just give that a few, few seconds to cure. So now we have belly, top, and as I said before, I did like a thin layer going around here um, just to get everything kind of uh, cemented together. So the last one now is going to be basically we're going to do the whole shit here in once. So we're going to go cover the eyes. We're going to cover all those places we already put. One layer or two layers actually. And here you have to kind of rotate it a little bit because if you forget about it, you have a drop like I had now because I put a little bit too much on here. That's good. So then you have to constantly rotate this when you are happy with that. I think this is uh, a decent looking head here, so 
just going to cure this. Then you can kind of rotate it slower. So you get that good cure of the UV resin everywhere. The clear ones goes much faster to cure than the colored ones. So, uh, but it's... And then when it's just freshly clear, cured like this, don't squeeze the head too much. Just leave it for a few minutes so the glue really goes together. Um, and, and then it's just perfect and then you can do whatever. You can bank it with a hammer or drive it with a car or whatever you want to do. Or fish it with probably the smartest thing. But here we have it. A foot long, articulated, whitefish, grayling, roach, whatever you feel like it. Pattern. Really cool. Swims like a really cool jerkbait side to side. The takes on these flies are insane. Quite easy to cast, even if you're looking to the size of these flies. Yeah, there's no problem to cast them with a line uh, and almost a full line. So durable flies, super fun to fish. And uh, well, of course, if you want to enjoy this and uh, maybe cast it yourself, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and uh, leave a comment and you might win it. Thanks you guys for watching. Hope to see you on the water, guys.